Hi everybody, I'm Eddie Clinton and welcome to Waco. Well, it is wet, it is cloudy, but it's hot. So you go figure it. One thing the Red Raiders hope to figure out is how to beat Baylor. They haven't done very well the past few years here in Baylor country, but today they hope to continue on their resurgent ways and knock Baylor out of their bowl run. We'll see if they can coming up from Waco this week on the video season ticket. Floyd Casey Stadium, some 30,000 people in attendance. They were wet to begin the game, and before it's all over, umbrellas would be the name of the game. Lynn Elliott kicks it off to begin the game for the Red Raiders. Carries into the end zone. It's fumbled, Smith fumbles, and he's going to be smacked down hard at the 16 by Thomas and by Worley. On the first play, David Mims, who had 170 yards on the day, gets 12 here out to the 28. Three plays later, J.J. Joe at quarterback again to Mims, and he goes for 12 out to the 47. Early part of this ball game may look like a Baylor highlight film. There's Mims again around the right side for 12, and he's down to the Tech 41 before he's stopped by Sean Jackson and Donnie Brooks. On the next play, John Henry, what a name, left guard for 11, down to the 30. Three plays later, J.J. Joe keeps, and he's going to be smacked by dancing Fred Petty. Loss of five on that play. Well, Baylor hit a field goal, but had a penalty, had to call it back, kick it again, and it was no good. So the score remains nothing, nothing. Tech's first possession. This is second and 10, Lynn around the right end for seven. Big Anthony running hard out to the 34. On third and three, Robert Hall rolls left, and the ball is complete to Rodney Blackshear. Rodney makes a couple of moves, moves it out to the 49. Well, the drive, uh, is in trouble right here. Robert Hall is smacked. The ball comes free. There'll be a lot of turnovers in this ball game. And Baylor takes over at the Tech 42. 7.42 left in the ball game. Some sloppy tackling on the slippery jerseys. And John Henry goes through right guard all the way for the touchdown. And the Baylor Bears, as they have done a lot in the past, go up on Tech. It is seven to nothing. The Bears have to kick off. Donald Marshall Gets the ball, kicks it, loses it, Baylor has it. And boy, this is reminiscent of a lot of times that the Raiders have been down in Waco. But looky here, Robert Strait fumbles, Tracy Saul recovers, and the Raiders have it at the 18. First down and 10 from the 18, 7.22 to go in the first quarter. Draw play to Anthony Lynn, but boy, he is smacked by Pearson, loss of one. Two plays later, Robert Hall to pass. He is dropped for a loss of eight by Hafford. And Baylor has a great, great defense. Well, Mark Bounds had uh, a tough day punting that football thing, trying to kick a slippery rock, and he certainly had his trouble. Got a good roll there, and the Baylor Bears, after a fair return, are set up at the 49. First and 10. Mims around the right side, but there's Mike Lissio, and he throws Mims for a loss of two. Two plays later, Mims around the right side for 16, and before he goes out of bounds hard by Tracy Saul right there, he's at the 22. Two plays later, J.J. Joe over right guard. He fumbles, and there's Tracy Saul trying to pick it up, but uh, eventually recovers the football, his second recovery of the game. Here's a replay. Look from the ground level how slippery the football was. J.J. Joe stripped right there. Looked like Fred Petty got a hold of him, trying to pick it up. The ball rolls free. Donnie Brooks fumbles it. Tracy Saul comes up with it, and the Raiders take over. 4.46 left in the first quarter. Anthony Lynn running hard in this ball game, his last trip to Waco, and picks up 15. The drive bogs again. Bounds comes in to punt, and again, oh my, like my golf shot off the side of his foot, and a 15-yard punt for Mark Bounds. Well, Baylor takes over. Still in the first quarter, J.J. Joe looks, throws, ball is complete. 39 yards all the way down 
before Saul and Wiley can bring him down. Field goal attempt is uh, good, and the Bears are up 10 to nothing. 35 seconds left in the first quarter. Well, last play of the first quarter, Robert Hall to Byron Hooper, and he picks up eight. Raiders still down 10. Let's move to second quarter action. This is third and 10. Robert Hall fakes the uh, pass and runs around left end for nine out to the 37. Punt formation now. Mark Bounds looks, looks, looks. He decides he's going to run, and he is in for the first down. Look again on the replay. Watch Baylor's defense completely run away. Coverage downfield. Mark Bounds said he had the green light, and he picked up a big, big first down for the Red Raiders, still down 10 to nothing at this point in time. Let's move to second and 11. Robert wants to pass, decides to run, and boy, he has done some great things running the football this year, hasn't he? Picked up eight there to the 29. Two plays later, first and 10. Robert complete to Scott Aylor, the third tight end for the Red Raiders, and he picks up 10 down to the 13. Let's move it now to third and eight. Ball is at the 11. Option to Anthony Lynn. Great blocking by the offensive line and the wideouts downfield. Touchdown. Texas Tech is on the board. Show you a replay of that. Beautiful blocking by that line. And the wideouts. Byron Hooper with a nice block and a great touchdown run. And the Raiders celebrate down in the end zone as they move to within 10 to 6. There you see Lloyd Hill and Anthony Stinnett helping Anthony Lynn. Lynn Elliott comes on, makes sevens out of sixes, and just like that, Texas Tech, 9.46 left in the half, moves within three, 10 to seven. Well, let's skip to later action in the second quarter. Texas Tech facing third and seven from the 34. Robert passes, the ball is tipped and intercepted by Smith at the 50, and he returns all the way to the 37 before big Jason Duvall comes up with the tackle. Second and 10 for the Bear. Joe passes complete to Bonner. And look at this, gets away and goes all the way down to the 16 yard line. Two plays later, the Bears try a little dipsy doodle, but there's Ben Kirkpatrick and that's a loss of eight for the Bears. But on the very next play, Joe passes complete to Pierce and he will go down the sidelines. And just like that, how do you do? The Baylor Bears, after the extra point, have jumped up to another 10-point lead, 17 to seven. Let's move to second and five from the 25. Delay play to Bam Morris, and he goes for 16 to the 41. What a fine drive this is. Anthony McDowell then gets the next call. He goes for 16 out to the 43 before he's tagged down. On first and 10, Hall completes to Lloyd Hill. Nice catch right there. Good for 11 down to the 32. Two plays later, pitch to Bam Morris around the left side, and he picks up seven tough yards. And on the very next play, first and 10, Robert wants to throw, looks, looks, looks. Great catch by Anthony Stinnett, his only catch of the day. But what a big one it was for the senior. Lynn Elliott, the other senior from Waco, adds the extra point. Texas Tech 14, Baylor 17. But here come the Bears again. Draw play to Mims, and he's going to pick up 19 out to the 39. On the next play, J.J. Joe wants to pass, complete to Steve Stutzman over the middle for 15. Three plays later. J.J. Joe scrambling. Great pressure by Kevin and Sean Jackson. He throws it up for grabs, and Tracy Soul has the interception. So Texas Tech holds on to a three-point deficit at halftime, and let's look at some crazy stats. As you see in the first half, 17 to 14 Baylor on top, but who would have ever believed in these conditions that Texas Tech would have 12 first downs and Baylor would have 13, rushing again, really surprising in this downpour. Baylor 171 yards, Tech 124. Baylor had 108 yards passing, Tech only 61, but look at that. Three turnovers for each team, and you can expect that in this kind of weather. And then finally, in the time of possession, Baylor, who started off and controlled the whole first quarter, only two minutes more possession time for Texas Tech in the first half, but hold on to your seats. We have a great second half for you.
Well, the Baylor Bears lead 17 to 14, and it is very important that Texas Tech establish some momentum. And here is Rodney Blackshear returning the opening kickoff of the second half all the way out to the 39. On the first play from scrimmage, this is Bam Morris going over the right side, and he picks up 13 all the way to the Baylor 48. Three plays later, Robert wants to throw complete to Lloyd Hill. He stretches and is granted the first out. First and 10, Anthony Lynn gets the call over left tackle for 11, down to the 27. What a drive. Four plays later, third and five. Hall passes into the end zone, incomplete, but there are the flags. Pass interference, Texas Tech moved down, got the field goal from Lynn Elliott, and it is Texas Tech 17 and Baylor 17. Baylor back with the ball, second and nine. Joe passes intended for McKenzie, in, intercepted by Donnie Brooks. And so the Red Raiders take over on second down. Hall passes complete to Blackshear along the uh, right sidelines for 13. On the next play, Robert again wants to pass over the middle this time for Lloyd Hill, complete, and he's down to the Baylor 18. Two plays later, second and seven. Robert Hall rolls right. He keeps it himself, finds the sideline, and is finally pulled down at about the six-yard line. Two plays later, second and six. Hall fakes, keeps himself into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas Tech. There you see the rain pouring down as the Raiders continue to roll as Lynn Elliott adds the extra point. And it is now Texas Tech 24, Baylor 17, 620 left in the third quarter. Baylor back with the ball. And here they come, John Henry, loss of one. Great play there by Freddie Petty, number 77. Three plays later, Mims gets the handoff along the left sideline. As we told you, 170 yards on the day. He got 14 on this one, two plays later. Joe passes complete to Pierce, that for 21 yards, and here comes Baylor, they're at the 34. Three plays later, draw play to Mims, up the middle, and he has 10 more. Boy, Tech has that seven point lead, but you don't feel safe. Joe passes, ball is going to be knocked down. Great play there by Brian Dubisky, and the Bears have to kick it away, and watch this. Spike Dyke's not very happy as the rain pelts down by this mark, but the Raiders were stuck at the half yard line. Show you how tough it was to get that ball away from the end zone too. First down, Robert tried to push it out. Three plays later, Mark Bounds has to punt as we start the fourth quarter. Great punt into that win. Look at that field. Ball is picked up at the 40 and the return team just simply trying to knock somebody down. Two passes, move the ball deep in Tech territory. This will be Stevens first and goal from the three. He dives over left tackle short at the one yard line. And here comes one incredible play. Stevens at left guard, the ball comes free. Where is it? Donnie Brooks has it. My goodness, he has an escort. J.J. Joe can't go. Donnie Brooks starts strutting at the 30. And holy cow, you talk about a 14-point turnaround. That's exactly what this was, as Donnie Brooks is credited with a 99-yard interception return. And after Lynn Elliott adds the extra point, Texas Tech is up 31 to 17, 12 minutes left in the ball game. Well, you think you can rel relax, right? Well, not hardly. J.J. Joe brings the back, passes to Mims. That good for 12 to the 43. Two plays later, John Henry in the left guard, and he goes for 14, all the way down to the 34. Tech penalized for the face mask, so the Bears first and 10 from the 19. Great defense right there, Carr, Tucker, and everybody else in the middle of the line. Four plays later, J.J. Joe is sacked by Steve Carr. That's a loss back to the eight. Two plays later, fourth and eight. Joe wants to pass, great pressure. Sims drops the ball and Texas Tech takes over one more time. Well, he couldn't move the ball. So Mark Bounds has to punt one more time into the wind and the rain. The ball is going to be picked up by Baylor Smith. And here he goes, he finds open. He's past the 30, the 20, inside the 10 yard line. But Baylor was penalized for clipping. So here they go, J.J. Joe wants to pass. Complete to Mims at the 33, good for a gain of 23. Three plays later, Joe Opsons to Mims along the right side, good for a gain of 20. And here come the Bears again. Tech up by those 14 points. Option play to Mims, he goes into the end zone, the extra point is good. 
And with about four minutes left in the game, Baylor is back within seven. Texas Tech has to move the football on offense, and that they do. Robert Hall throws to Lloyd Hill. He's out over the 35, good for a first down. Three plays later, big play. Robert Hall takes off, quarterback draw, and he picks up another first down. And the drive sizzles after four more plays. Mark Bounds comes in to punt, and it's a good one. Smith takes it at the 13, and he squirms around and is going to be pulled out at the 24. Three plays later, first and 10, ball at the 34. Very few seconds left in the ball game. Three-man Tech rush, great pressure. Fred Petty, number 77, has him. Texas Tech hangs on to win 31-24. We'll remind you, no tape next week, so savor this one, and we'll be back with another video season ticket for the Houston game. Right now, let's go to a happy Tech dressing room. Have you had one much sweeter than this this year? No, not this year. I'll tell you, that was a nice win, Eddie. It was, uh, it really was. It was a great win. The way the scenario all unfolded, it especially, was great. We uh, got behind early, and you know, our old stock went down a bunch. You, you could have sold us pretty cheap, I imagine, about that time. And our old guys responded, and they hung in there, and we finally got a little fire, and we finally got a little momentum. And, and uh, kept digging and scratching and clawing and coming back and and uh, gosh made a game of it and came out in the second half and got after him pretty good on offense and made some plays on defense and you know then we get down to the really getting close and we make the great play on defense the 99 yard return of the fumble and boy when you do that I'll tell you what it really does uh, it does a lot of things for your football team and it was one of those things that was just a great football play and and uh, you know, it just it was a team effort today, and offense, defense, and the whole ball of wax. So that's always nice. What did you talk about at halftime? Because you dramatically seemed to come out with the momentum in the third quarter. Well, we we talked about uh, taking that ball and going down there and and scoring and ringing the bell, and we did. Went down there and kicked the field goal and responded very favorably. And uh, boy, it's big. That's big when that happens because there's you know you're sort of shaky, and uh, and that really does. Uh, I think it just sort of makes it prove to the rest of your team that you've, you know, here we go. And uh, the offense did a great job with that. And I uh, thought they all complimented each other very well today, though. Uh, that was mainly Dubisky's. Dubisky was should get all the credit for it. He made a great hit. Even though it was a fourth down play, they wouldn't have got the touchdown anyway. He made a nice hit. It kind of surprised me because I just happened to be outside responsibility and the ball just popped in my hand. And really it was effortless. It was a good hit by Dubisky. I got to say that again. And, I just, once I get the ball, I, I don't think, well, nobody's going to catch me. I know that. <laughs> well, it's hard kicking in these, these type of weather conditions. It really is. You know, the, the wind and, and the rain doesn't help the ball fly any better. But uh, I think some things like that you just have to overcome, especially when it um, comes time to do that. Talk a little bit about the uh, fake punt that you ran and got the first down for him. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I've always wanted to be a running back. I guess it was just a chance for me to take a little bit of the limelight there. It's something that Coach Dox called earlier in the season. I mean, earlier this, this week he said that uh, that would be open, so Coach Dox should take all the credit for that. He uh, caught, had a great call, and if they're going to find a weakness on, the, on that uh, on their side of the ball, they'd leave it up to our coaches to do it because I feel that we have the best in the Southwest Conference. So great call by Coach Dox. For those people that thought Baylor was going to blow us out, uh, look at the score in the papers and uh, television. You, know, you, can, you can never underestimate a team. I feel uh, we came out. Uh, with the intention of winning a football game. We didn't come down here to hopefully stay close. We came to win. We came to play hard. You know, we came to sweat a little bit, and now we did, and in turn, we won the game. As far as the receiver, you know, we was just going, you know, trying to hold on to the ball because, you know, the ball was slick, and, you know, the lineman, you know, trying to get their blocks and everything. You know, we just, you know, click, you know, and, you know, we got the job done. Yeah, we had to, we had to come together and make our mind if we was going to play or we was going to let them rule us. We came out and moved the ball. The offensive line was blocking great. And uh, defense played a heck of a game, too. So uh, it just worked out both ways on the both ends. How was it uh, playing out there in the rain? It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. It was a little slippery, but uh, we, we held on to the ball, and that was good. No turnovers. You know, we just had a good game, everybody. Uh, me and Dawson have an old thing going back uh, dated up into high school, and he, he was a senior when I was a junior in high school. So I was looking forward to it. him and uh, Robin Jones. They're both tapped to be All-Americans. and. He's going to be uh, probably one of the Lombardi uh, Outland Trophy uh, finalists. So I just wanted, you know, I just, we just wanted to come out and show that we could play some football you know, up front. 
Uh, you guys did, did just that. Uh, first half, of course, first quarter, they came out uh, driving the ball, but you guys seemed to click it on there in the second quarter. Finally, their second half, you just guys just did yeah, it. Yeah, I think when we, when we first got out, we were kind of timid. We didn't want to make any mistakes, but playing against a team like Baylor, and you just had to go out and turn yourself loose and see what happens, and uh, we, we won. I, that was great. Uh, they had been playing me inside all night and not paying attention to me running the outside routes, and so coach called a sucker out. We went to run it. Uh, <laughs> I just kind of faked outside and went up the field, and he wasn't paying attention. I just took the ball out of his hand because I was due for a touchdown. Talk a little bit about the weather. What problems did that give you with the rain and everything just stopping and coming? Uh, with the rain, I thought it was going to be kind of hard to catch the ball, and I thought maybe we'd run the ball more, but, you know, more concentration and uh, the stick going to help us catch the ball. <laughs> Wingo uh, took on the lead blocker, and then they came up over the pile, and I hit the guy, and uh, next thing I knew, uh, Brooks had the ball, and he was about at the 40-yard line running down the sidelines, and, that, you know, that's a big play. We've been uh, – our defense needs plays like that. We need to score the ball and give the offense good position, and uh, that's what we did today. We played a little inconsistent at times, but we made the big plays, and sometimes that's what it's all about. Yes, I think that really shocked him that we would come out and, and fight him that hard. Uh, I guess they were expecting us to lay down because they jumped out. 17-7 on us, but uh, we fought them real hard and uh, came out with the win. I should say that drive right before halftime, when you march it down the field, uh, an impressive drive, you wind up throwing in the end zone, but, but that probably was the drive that looked like got the confidence back uh, if it had ever gone for you guys. It did. Uh, the first touchdown, it, it meant a lot, but that second one meant a whole lot. We, we hit them deep with a pass, and then that was going into the halftime. Coming back, we would get the ball, so you know, it just really hurt them. Yeah, my side's feeling a lot better today, you know, pull that thorn out. Man, Baylor was just six out of seven last year. That's that's tough, you know, and you know, I was there my redshirt freshman year when, when we fought, you know we beat Baylor. So, you know, this is a big win for us, and I'm just thrilled to death right well, now. Well, early in that, that uh, final period, a play that really turned the ball game around was uh, when they hand off up inside, and you and I guess Brian Dubisky combined to, to knock the ball loose, and that, that turned the game around. Yeah, Matt took out that, you know, that lead blocker, and then me and the Bisky just capped him from each side and, you know, forced the ball loose. And I, I was just looking down the sideline to see if the referee had called anything. And next thing I know, I look down there, and Donnie's down there about the 30 going in, walking, you know, having a good time down there. So I'm just glad he did it, you know. I can't say anything more than that, but I'm just, you know, I think our goal line defense played really good today. He didn't set any records uh, running 100 yards, but it looked like for a moment or two, there was confusion about where the football was. I was confused. I was still laying on the ground looking for, you know, a call or something. I stand up and I see Brooks down there and I'm waiting for a ref, you know, to give us a holding call or something like that, like they've been doing all day. But, uh, you know, he took it in and it was a touchdown for us, you know, and that's, you know, 31 points. Yeah, we did. We made a lot of big plays today. Um, you know, down on the goal line, um, Steve Carr and Brian Nabisky making the hit, Donnie Brooks running it back. Um, we just had a lot of intensity today and we played hard and, and we played the way we needed to. You know, even right before halftime, it's 17 to 14, and you pick off a pass. I mean, you look back on some things, and there there's some plays that didn't seem so significant at the time that really are add up to the to the Red Raider win. Yeah, we had a lot of plays that, that didn't seem, uh, you know, very big at the time, but but really they were. Um, you know, at any time that in during the game, um, you know, something big can happen. So um, you've got to, uh, you know, always be ready to make the play, and and uh, you know, we showed that today. Yeah, it was a pretty good game. And we came out of first, and uh, we could, really couldn't move the ball on them. Then we made some changes on the, on some formations, and we started moving the ball very easily on them. I'll tell you what, late in the second quarter and on into the third, the ground game came alive. Yeah, we just started firing off the ball. You know, we felt that we can uh, handle them up front, and that's all we had. You know, it was kind of the, the situation was kind of bad because of the rain. So we thought we had to stick to the uh, ground game. We got some big backs, and the big backs in the rainy weather, you know, it was pretty hard to bring down. How difficult did the, the rain and the wind make the conditions out there? Well, you know, hold on to the ball. As you can see, you know, Baylor had more problems than we did, but hold on to balls a lot, you know. Your pants is wet tackling, and it's, you know, it's very hard. So, you know, that thing, you know, for us, that's a, a advantage because, you know, we had a lot of big backs. Well, things usually balance out. They say that over the course of the years, the breaks always balance up. And, and, uh, of course, you know, they, they blocked that field goal last year and they made a big play. Well, we forced that fumble and we made a big play. So it was. It turned about as fair play, Eddie. What about the weather? How much did it hamper you and did you have to change your game plan at all? Nah, the weather's the weather and the weather doesn't help or hurt anybody. Everybody plays in it. And I, don't, I never have felt like that was a big factor. Uh, sometimes it's uncomfortable, but that, that should never be a factor in the outcome of a football game because both teams play in the same weather. 
but I kind of found it wasn't near as wet over on our sideline today as it might have been on the other sideline. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It was. It's pretty wet at times now. Believe me, it really was. But it was. A, it was a good ball game. Uh, you know, there were. I thought old. Uh, well, Mark Bounds. Oh, Mark mm-hmm. kicked so bad the first time he kicked, and and the next time he went out there, he pulled it down and ran with it. Might, it might have been the biggest play in the game. Sort of got a start on offense, and and uh, you know, of course, the intercept, the fumble. Uh, recovery in the air was a big play and uh, the offense made a lot of big plays. We made two fourth down plays uh, in the second quarter that turned into touchdowns and, and you know those things uh, that's how you, that's what you got to do and I thought uh, I thought overall it was just a good football game because our guys really played hard and they hung in there and they never did get on that uh, momentum roller coaster. It wasn't up and down and up and down. We played with the same level of concentration the same level of intensity, the same tempo all day long and, and I'm proud of them for it. That begs a question, though. Did you give Mark Bounds the green light, and, and who would give Mark Bounds the green light? Yeah, yeah, we, we talked about that, and we, we worked on it. Coach Maskew uh, saw a deficiency in that in their return team last week, and we worked on it this week during practice uh, three or four times. And so uh, it was it was designed, and Mark did a fine job. You know, I, he lulled me to sleep. I thought he was going to kick it. He started out, and he's got good eyes. He's got good judgment. He made a big play. Final question, uh, anybody that's watched this team all year really has to be impressed the way they have come together. I don't know anybody that's playing any better than you are right now. Well, I don't know about that, Eddie, but I know this, that when we were one and four, uh, you know, people were down and, and uh, you know, it wasn't a lot of fun. And uh, a lot of people uh, giving up on us and waiting for the season to be over. And, and uh, But, boy, we had great fans and we had great support and they never did waver and they hung in there with us and, our players hung in there and they stayed together, and that's what really makes it fun. It's uh, so many times uh, when you get in a situation like that, your fans leave you, your student body leaves you, your players leave you. Or I don't mean leave you, but they leave each other, and our, our guys never did that. They, they, uh, you know, maybe adversity brought the very best of us out, and uh, and I'm really proud of them for that. And I'm proud of our fans and proud of our student body because golly, they've been fantastic. No game and no tape next week, but uh, we'll see you in two weeks in Houston. That'll be great. Boy, we got a big chore ahead of us in Astrodome. Now, I'm telling you, the, uh, the Cougars are hard to beat if you play them, wherever you play them. But when you go down to that dome, you better bring your lunch because it's an all-day affair, and it's going to be a tough game for us, and I hope we respond very favorably. Have you dried out yet? Uh, i got plenty of time to dry out. I'm not going to worry about that.